each other so many times at this point. They know each other so well. But the new wrinkle in this is the Dyer's Wolf. Only about four or five sets between them, as they've said. So they're going to be playing a new interesting matchup on this for at least a, a tournament stage. Right, and it looks like we're getting right into it, of course. Goblin Man's Roy had an incredible run at Frostbite, but Dyer playing Wolf, previously Inkling, trying to put some new strategies on the, on the ground there. But it yeah. seems that right now, Goblin Man is doing his best to absolutely get into him without any single problem. And what we're going to see right here, of course, some edge guard opportunities from Dyer. As he gets the first stock, getting rid of Goblin, now a two stock. Yeah, I feel like that's probably going to be the, the best thing in Goblin's favor in this matchup, is just how well a Wolf can push somebody off stage just further and further horizontal, which, of course, Roy's going to struggle with the recovery. Stay safe recovery back in the corner of the ledge. Right now, Dyer staying at three stock, but at one ten percent. Any strong hit from Goblin's Roy will kill him, but he's getting a little bit more right there. 26 right now, but 119 still staying alive in center stage. Yeah, those early fares and early dash attacks are going to lead into a lot of low percent combos for Wolf. See a lot of damage stack up on that Roy, who's obviously going to be a fast follower. A great parry from Goblin. Jab back there, but not quite the kill. Sour Spot goes back to the stage and the edge opportunity, but misses it. Yeah, that's going to be the mix-up you're going to see a lot of in this set, whether it's going to be side B or up B back to ledge. 134 right now. He's happy staying his ground, shooting blasters from center stage. A good there opportunity, and all of a sudden, Goblin finds himself at 67%. Will he be able to get a kill right here? And up here will do it, evening the stock count. Now two to stock the piece. 67% on Goblin, definitely not something that's insurmountable, especially low percent combos for Roy. You're going to see jab side B really net a lot of early damage. And of course, now we're going to try to see both players in this second stock battle. Good edge guard opportunity for Dyer. Misses the forward tilt. And now moving back to stage. Yeah, so far, not a single percent on Dyer's second stock. It's going to be a little bit difficult for getting to this opening. Wolf, a very safe character, obviously. And of course, now we see Dyer with taking the two stock lead, having no problem getting the match back to his fitting. Once again, we see him setting up in center stage as well. Going to be using that a lot to his advantage. Wolf, a very safe character in neutral. All righty. Winning now. Dyer at two stock. About to get edge guarded. Still a safe recovery. Snapping to the ledge. Been a couple times now that he's used that up B recovery. Yet to see the side B back in. Wonder if, uh, we're going to see Goblin run off of those early fares to try to counteract that. Just like that. An edge guard, but the side B will not be enough to make it back to the stage. And now we have a one stock match at Pokemon Stadium. Opening up this top eight. Dyer gets a nair to an up throw. An up air. Yeah, early percent combos, of course, are really interested to see who really takes the aggressive point off stage. Both of these characters are just out dying very early to those early edge guards. Goblin looks the being quite pressured right now, still at 0% for Dyer. And a forward tilt, will this be a JV2? Goblin recovers, still struggling to get back in, but the Nair opens it up, a second one, forward air, gets, misses the re-grab, and now Dyer going for the back throw. Now we're going to see this offstage pressure once again. Dyer been very comfortable forcing Goblin into this corner. Okay, the up air, and all of a sudden Goblin regaining control, even though he has double percent of Dyer. Waiting to come back in. Dyer needs one more strong hit to get his first game. Yes. And the up he whiffs, and the up yes. tilt will do it. Dyer takes game one over Goblin Man to open up our top eight. Really interesting to see Dyer come out with that early aggression. You saw that first dash attack there, trying to close it out with that. The early upbeat to try to counteract that, not enough for Goblin. And the up tilt, as you mentioned, finishing it out. To me, this matchup is a sort of a battle of understanding how people can really do their best to mitigate either spacing on one end, but also knowing how hits can be sweet or sour spots. Yeah, Roy especially. Uh, that's really been his, uh, his like, you know, his, his uh, raison d'etre since melee, obviously, with the sour spots at the edge compared to the, the hilt being the stronger hitbox. Goblin, if anyone, is going to be so familiar with how to connect those combos well. And of course, Roy, his biggest opener is jab, he gets any arrow that he wants. And notice how basically when you have an edge guard opportunity, Roy has to snap to the ledge, but he has to be careful on what stage he chooses because the ledges have different distances between them. Whereas Wolf has two options, up B or side B. The ledge is where you want to go at any and all points. So it's all a matter of how quickly they can do it and how safely they can do it. Yeah, we didn't see it in that first game, but uh, Dyer's ability to space F tilt on the ledge, as you mentioned, is going to be incredibly effective and potentially edgeguarding Roy. 
Moving into this game too, we have Yoshi's Island from Brawl. And of course, playing with hazards off, there will be no extra platforms on the side. So this is basically as neutral as it gets. Of course, there are some slants on the middle of the stage and on the ledges. So certain characters can take advantage of that. And right now, Goblin trying to get the first edge opportunity. Great mix from Dyer there to use an up B instead of a side B to miss that counter from Roy. Yeah, there's been a couple of times now we've seen him try to use that as an edge guard opportunity. Oh, this is dangerous. That up B is so strong from Roy and huge yeah. hitboxes around it. He nearly got it. The falling there. Risky from Dyer. Misses the tech. Can he get back to the stage? Barely with that ledge snap. And now both players at kill percent. A dash tech will get gobbled off the stage, but still, both players so good at using the recovery to get safely back onto the stage. And right now, it's whoever wins the next neutral opening. You've seen Goblin use that step back F tilt a couple times now. Incredibly strong kill option from Roy, but he's got a couple of options for a kill setup here. The F tilt, you're going to see the jab into the back air or the up air as well. There's a couple different things he could be looking for right now. And I don't believe Roy has a kill throw, correct? Not even up. No, absolutely not. If it is, it's going to be an incredibly high percent. Characters having kill throws very important, but Dyer once again at 156, full rage right now. A backer at 107 will definitely kill Roy, and now he's going to do his best to see how much extra credit he can get. Still not dying, even though Goblin. Got that first opening jab. He rolls back onto the stage. Dyer ready for the roll. Two forward airs in. It's been a couple times now, obviously, that Dyer's been able to close that stock when he chooses to. And that's going to be a big thing. When these two players know each other as well as they do, the fact that he's been able to get that consistently really allows him to stretch his advantage. And it's important to say that when you're trying to close out the stock, it's important to get hits but not kills. But in this case, Roy, both of his hits will be any kill, any air that he does, any jab. The up air was soft, though. Misses the second hard one. He seems that's to be struggling as a 190 for Dyer. That's the beauty of switching over to Wolf for him as well. Obviously an Inkling main at the start of Ultimate. Using Wolf's increased kill power compared to Inkling really has netted him quite an advantage so far in this set. And now both players waiting to see. Exactly, they can snap back to the ledge. A forward tilt will do it for the opening. And Roy barely now recovering. Dyer now with a full stock lead. Only at 100% too, didn't have to commit to anything off stage. Really important play there from Dyer. He's able to stretch this even further now. Okay, great dancing sword, dancing player here from Goblin. Opening up a 45% combo. He needs to get these easy one, two hits right now. He can't take any risks at last stop. Up beat to snap back to the ledge once again. See these obvious swings here from Goblin. Trying to get these openings set up, trying to get this to like, close this out before taking too much damage. But Dyer has just played so safe this entire set. Okay, falling there. We talked about it earlier. Goblin's gonna, or excuse me, Dyer's gonna be looking for a lot of these early fares from Wolf. Try to get as much pressure as he can without having to overly commit into Roy's uh, uh, Roy's space. And notice right there with the up he was actually able to, to go past the ledge and use the aerial trick afterwards to barely snap back on. And it's interesting, given the, uh, given the matchup history between these two, Dyer looking incredibly comfortable so far in these first two games. Goblin does seem to be struggling a little bit. He's, he's able to get the hits, and right now, of course, Dyer is happy to sit in shield, but the more he does that, it sort of loosens up those open hitboxes, like Wolf's head and his feet. Not quite a kill right there. The side up the actually up angled upward smart recovery from Dyer once again, and it's right now in these situations that he seems to be doing so well. You've seen so many times Dyer just reset the center stage too, using this ticky tack damage from Wolf. No really hard commits on his part, but building up further and further. Goblin's got to be careful. This is a small ceiling stage. He's going to be pretty close to a couple of kill options now. And now Dyer once again at full rage, waiting to use a blaster. Forward air will not quite kill just yet. Not the soft one at least. But back air will do it. Now I've seen Goblin win these many, many times. Even here at 108, it all takes one hit to start it. But unfortunately, Dyer. Opting to get that first hit first, and just like that, he goes up 2-0 in this set. The nice thing about that second game there is Goblin was actually able to close, or excuse me, Dyer was able to close out a couple of set, or a couple of stocks there, right at 100%, early-ish for Smash Ultimate so far. Obviously, a really big thing on his part to be able to close those out early compared to Roy. Uh, so right now, really, this is in favor of Dyer. Obviously, 2-0 lead here. Goblin's gonna have to dig deep if he's gonna pull this back. All right, so we're gonna see now. Of course, reverse 3 0 comebacks. That's the classic in any Smash tournament. One, Waiting once again, running it right back to Yoshi's Island. He said, you know what, that first one was a fluke. I'll run it right back.
Yeah, it's interesting to see the Goblin is this confident on the stage, too. It's a little bit curious, because obviously you're going to be able to use Roy's uh, larger hitboxes to cover that top platform. Right. Wolf incredibly comfortable using those landing aerials up there as well. And I really like how he's using the blaster. Even if he's not hitting the blaster, still using it to open up little space options, making your opponent jump, making them roll, making them do things that they wouldn't be comfortable doing. But in this case, with a blaster, with a projectile that good, it's sort of all you need. That's what makes it so great. It's, it does a ton of damage for a projectile, but it, you mentioned it. It really makes you commit to a defensive option, which is so important in this game. If you're able to control space like that from across the stage, it's what offers one of many things that makes it so strong. And I'm noticing right now Goblin is opting to use Roy's, one of Roy's best uh, approaches, which is falling up there, goes an entire 180 around his body, especially that back hitbox, which catches a lot of people up off guard. Usually most moves, the longer the route, the weaker they get, but it seems Roy's up there stays the same strength throughout his whole body. So we're seeing it right there. Wow, Dyer getting that incredible first kill off the left side of the stage. And really just more of the same so far from Dyer. These early percent kills. Not taking a ton of damage either. Oh. Checking that one though. Edge guard opportunity, but that was a great tech from Dai. You need to tech those every single time. There are some moves in this game which are untechable, and a back air will not quite do it. Dyer with an amazing DI is now staying alive. He's been doing so well at staying at these super high percents all set. And that's the beauty. You see him land that early fair on shield. It's going to get grabbed for it, but if he can connect with that, that's an easy 20% for a wolf right off a jump. Now waiting on here, we're going to see whether or not Goblin can sort of fix what he was doing the rest of the set. Can he get this kill? Or would Dyer keep running away with extra straight hits? That's the thing. Maybe one hit isn't too bad, but it becomes two, then three, and the next thing you know, you're at 70%. The next thing you know, you're at kill combo percent. That's been every stock so far. He has yet to be able to close it out at sub 20%. Gets the parry there, but does not land the up air. I'm going to get grabbed for his efforts. There's going to be an extended combo here with the up airs. Follows the air dodge, but doesn't commit to any offensive option. Dyer just happy to control stage at this point. And it's making me wonder that if Goblin went back to the stage, because he loves using that middle platform for his aerials. Can he actually contest someone like Dyer, who's so good at spacing aerials and recoveries? I mean, you look at right there. Dyer actually faded all the way off stage and upbeat back because he just doesn't want to commit to a landing option. And why would you? When you have this kind of advantage right now over a player in this mindset mid-set like this, you just want to keep stretching this further and further. Now look at the percent right now. It's exactly what I was saying. A falling there. He still has one more chance to bring this back, but if it goes down to a 3-1 to stock lead, kill throw up. He does have a kill throw, but at very high percent. Yes, at 166 on what is tied for one of the shortest stages in the game, too. Wow. An up, up smash there, and that's going to close it out. A full stock lead now for Dyer. That up smash from Dyer Wolf. Dyer straight. Yep, an up smash from Wolf is very, very deadly. It hits from the side of his body, then brings you up into it. The starting hitbox is gigantic. Absolutely right. We'll say it's a little too big. Nintendo, get on that. <laughs> Thank you. And now Dyer finding himself in a great position, whereas Goblin might see his last stock of the tournament right here, unless he turns it up to 11. He needs to have, make something happen here. This is what makes things so dangerous. Wolf with these continued combos out of that up throw. He's able to follow immediately with that up air, and then if he wants to commit to a second jump and a second up air, he can. But he can also land on that platform and reset and just call out Goblin's defensive option. Does he air dodge down? Does he air dodge to the side? How is he going to be able to follow this? Even if he got a second up air, Wolf is happy to trade with a falling air. That's the thing. His arrows come out so quickly. I think he needs to go for a huge read, and he just did it! Was that going to kill? He's going back to the stage. Okay, still good recovery. A nair. He needs to have this aggression right here. So he's going to cover that stand up with Jab. We'll see the Nair again. Get up attack. Fully invincible in this game. Great options are dying. Oh, all right. Wait a minute. Goblin now bringing this back. Even though it was a three stock lead, he's at 87. This is doable. I've seen this happen. I think this is the closest we've seen him on this final stock, too. This is a big advantage for him. So far. And I'm wondering if Dyer is going to get a tunnel vision and go try to, I don't know, as quickly as he can, go for the kill. Or is Goblin going to keep his ground and get his own straight hits? He misses the grab, though. Three jabs come in. Now a 97 snap to the ledge. Will he get the edge guard? He's waiting for it! Kip jumps back on! Yeah, we saw him finally use that platform to his advantage. Only was able to net 32%. Dyer once again reverting back to the safe gameplay over and over again. But sometimes it seems something's clicked here for Goblin. He's at 56, a few more for a kill, but he has to avoid every single hit from Wolf. Oh, this neutral is so close. They have to wait in each other's shields. Missing the back air and now a forward throw. No read afterwards. Up air. Oh! This is where things get dangerous. One F smash from Roy. This is basically even percents right now. Whoever gets the hard oh. read first. And they're playing so carefully. These two have played so many times. How many times have they been in this exact situation? The jab, no read, no dash attack. And now Dyer going for one more throw. One, 53 for Roy. Is that full rage? Any smash attack will kill on Wolf. The question is, will he go for it? We're getting close to these jab into aerial confirms as oh. well. You see the F tilt there. So close right oh, now. But the F tilt from Wolf is going to finish now. Three wow. 
Three wow. from God or from Dyer over Goblin. And now Dyer, of course, taking that first set. Usually in this case, we know that Goblin has had a pretty good record on Dyer, but it looks like in this case he was prepared and ready to go.